So for our next one, it's kind of weird to consider and the setup it can get kind of messy, but it does have a ramification in what we do in application. Uh, so our statement reads, try to compute the self-inductance of the hairpin loop shown in the diagram. Neglect the contribution from the ends. Most of the flux comes from the long straight section. You'll run into a snag that is characteristic of many self-induction, um, self-inductance calculations. To get a definite answer, assume that the wire has a tiny radius epsilon and ignore any flux through the wire itself. All right, so let's go ahead and draw this out. The hairpin, uh, what we see is just a very uh, short circular but oblong uh, radius, or not radius, but a loop of length L. Uh, separated by distance d. So, therefore, if we want to try this out, what we're going to have to do is take uh, one wire at a time, since most of the um, flux is going to come from each wire, and we have two separate wires. We'll just go ahead and set that up from the beginning. So the total flux is equal to two uh, uh, phi i, or phi 1, so from one to the other. So with that, we'll just go ahead and uh, just tag that along. The flux, which is b.da, uh, what we see for a wire, that's mu.i over 2 pi s. And again, lengthwise, we go dx and ds. Um, it should be a little backwards, so I apologize for switching the uh, differential there. But what we know in ds, or the radial direction, is that we're running from um, the center to the edge, which is epsilon, and then the separation distance is d minus epsilon to the other side. So we just have to be very careful how we set this up in the diagram. It took me a couple of times to draw it out. Don't feel bad if you need to as well. But, you know, again, what we're going to see is that natural log that we deal with, with pretty much all these questions. And that's what the integral results in. You see, we got some nice cancellations, but now we're ready to move forward. Now, this being said, the epsilon in the numerator is very negligible when compared to the separation distance. Pretty, you know, reasonable there. But the denominator cannot, uh, we cannot let epsilon go to zero in the denominator because then we're going to get a domain restriction and an error, okay? And if we have that, that's going to say that the flux is infinite. That's not physical. Um, so we'll just approximate this uh, flux by letting ln of d minus epsilon over epsilon go to ln of d over epsilon. And then we'll see, we'll plug it into the inductance and we see the currents cancel again. So you get mu naught L over pi times ln of D over epsilon. What this suggests is that the uh, radius or the width of the wire actually matters and is critically important. So keep that in mind when, de when designing things in the future.